friends, my name's Britt. If you've never been here before, welcome to my channel. I did an Instagram post recently and it got a lot of support and I got a lot of DMs about it. So I am taking it upon myself to create an entire YouTube episode about a recent ritual that I've started, which includes my moon blood, moon blood, moon blood. And for those of you that have maybe never heard of moon blood or moon cycles, what I'm talking about is your period. Some people refer to period as a rag. So what I wanted to make this YouTube about today is just the reasons that I started doing this ritual, the way that I do it, and a little bit of a backstory on just how innately our body is synced up with the moon. It's really, really cool if you sit down and think about it. So if this sounds interesting to you, please, by all means, keep watching. for me to talk about just opening up a conversation about stuff like this is like so revitalizing for me it's like my very favorite thing to do whether I'm talking about vulnerability or authentic expression or communication or creativity or anything that I've really really been working with myself on for the last few months it's just so freeing for me to open up about it and talk about it with people that's exactly why I have a YouTube channel before I get started with this video I want to also mention if you aren't already following me on Instagram please go and do that and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of my upcoming stuff. It will be helpful if you click that little red bell so that you get a notification whenever I do upload as well. I think a really, really fun thing to start out with is why I call my period a moon cycle. And that is because uh, as women, we are naturally attuned. Whenever we allow our flow to flow naturally, we are synced with the moon and its cycles. And I personally stopped taking birth control about a year and a half ago, and it was the greatest decision I ever made. I was taking birth control pills for about nine years, and the way that I was controlling my own moon cycle was that I would take the pills for two months at a time, so I would only have my period every two months. And it's so interesting the ways that we've manufactured these pieces of medication pretty much to be able to control the way that our body naturally functions. No shade to anyone taking birth control pills. I know there are a lot of women taking them for a lot of different reasons. There are a lot of purposes for this pill. And I was on it too for a really long time, but the main purpose that I was on it was just to avoid getting pregnant because of the unnatural hormones that it was putting into my body. I decided that I no longer wanted to be opting into that option. Just wanted to clarify. Also, have you ever noticed this Gemini painting? This beautiful woman, Rhiannon, on Instagram sent it to me a while back and I'm so obsessed with it. Just wanted to put that out there. So something that I wasn't really aware of years and years ago, whenever I was taking the birth control pills for many years, is that just like the moon cycle is 28 to 29 days, our natural flow cycle is usually calculated in the same way, so 28 to 29 days, and it's so interesting. Um, I've been really experimenting with my own moon cycle. I use an app that tracks my moon cycle. That's my method of birth control as well, and it's really interesting because I don't usually have a 28 or 29 day cycle. Usually it goes from about 32 to 45 days, which I know some of you might be like, 45 days, oh my gosh, something's wrong with you. But this is another aspect of just um, allowing my body to naturally flow the way that it does and not thinking that I'm broken or damaged or anything like that, but just understanding that sometimes, maybe some of you that are on natural forms of birth control understand this, when you're more stressed, your period, your mood cycle will take longer to come. I know for myself as well, when I start getting stressed out, if I'm pregnant or something like that, it will delay my period from starting that much longer. And I think this last month I've had a lot of healing in myself. So this has been the very first moon cycle that I have had a 28 day cycle 
in I think ever actually usually I have at the very shortest like a 32 day cycle but this month it was exactly 28 days which was crazy but um, really really interesting to kind of start mapping when you are on natural methods of birth control just starting to map what's going on from month to month and then seeing the amount of time that it takes for your moon cycle to come again super super interesting and maybe I could do a future video on that as well if there's interest so I'm wearing so much makeup today too, it like looks so weird, but I got done with a Christian jewelry photo shoot this morning and I came home and was like, well, I'm going to record anyways, might as well have a little bit of makeup on. I think it's really, really interesting that moon blood is one of the only naturally occurring types of blood, yet so many people are grossed out by it. It's really interesting. We have violence and killing and war all over our media blood just here there and everywhere especially in video games and things like that with young children for whatever reason people are super grossed out by blood that naturally comes from the uterine lining of women <laughs> uh, i'm also a prenatal yoga instructor and just a little backstory on the reason that we shed our moon blood every month basically some little eggs it's interesting because when I was growing up, I heard that it was just one egg that would come down and to be fertilized every month. But from what I've been hearing recently, it's 10 to 15 eggs, which is really interesting for me. Let's say between one and 15 eggs come down to be fertilized every month. And if they are fertilized, then that grows into a little baby and attaches itself to the uterus and then it starts growing and if it's not fertilized all the uterine lining that's like getting ready to basically build a baby the lining the eggs and the blood um, come out and that is the blood that we shed every month so this is the reason that sometimes we can have like some little bits inside of the moon blood and yes, this is moon blood from myself. This is what I have shed. <laughs> um, so not this amount, by golly. <laughs> I dilute this as well. Let's get into some benefits of moon blood and what it can be utilized for. You can do a wide variety of things with this moon blood. If you're not comfortable with ceremonial practices and you just want to use this as a natural way to help your plants thrive, use this as like a miracle growth, that's great. I thought it was so interesting upon doing some research before I started doing the moon blood ritual that our human blood and the blood that we shed through our moon cycle has three vital macronutrients in it that help plants totally thrive. Phosphorus, nitrogen, and potassium. Phosphorus, nitrogen, and potassium. So super interesting. So you can stop by miracle Grow because as women, we literally have miraculous stuff that comes out of us every single month and we don't have to try to get it there. We can use it for something good. Now I'm going to kind of transition into the ritual side of things and the way that I personally use it. So our sexual organs are associated with the creative center of the chakra system and I am someone that definitely utilizes the chakra system in a lot of my own personal expansion and growth and the second chakra is the sacral chakra which is associated with the sexual organs and associated with creation and creativity, our relationship with creativity. And I think it's been really, really interesting for me as I've become more and more comfortable with my own creative center and my own sexuality and sexual expression that this whole gate has kind of opened up an entire floodgate of creativity for myself. Um, I'm someone that used to constantly tell myself that I was not creative and that some people are just born that way and I wasn't one of those people but upon diving deeper into the stems and roots of my creative center of my sacral chakra I was able to discover all these things that were unhealed that have happened to me in my life these are memories sexual trauma sexual suppression that I forgot was there and upon spending time with those I was able to heal them and now I just feel so 
so much more free in this space. I'm constantly creating art. I'm writing a bunch of songs. I'm becoming a lot more attuned to my own creative nature. And I'm starting to realize that each and every one of us that's born is born as a creative being. Each and every one of us come into this world as a blank slate and we are only suppressed by the things that our family teaches us, the surroundings that we witness around us whenever we're growing up, our ancestral lineage. Um, so that's basically what our family tells us about creativity and the way that we see them living as creative spirits. So really, it's interesting because think of a little baby who grows up in a super creative um, surrounding with like tons of instruments and arts and paints and super supportive parents. Like, unless something happens that caves in that creative center of that baby, chances are that baby's going to grow up with a really healthy relationship with their own creative nature. Doesn't that make sense? So I have a lot of stories that I would tell myself. A lot of it stems from my past being bullied as well, me attempting to be creative and getting shut down by other people and then suppressing myself from being creative in front of other people because I didn't want to be not liked. I didn't want to be not accepted. It's really interesting whenever you give it a little bit of time, whenever you ask yourself really specific questions and you give yourself time to go back into those memories and really get curious at who you are and the experiences that you've had. And this helps me to realize the complexities not only of my own nature in all avenues of life, but it also helps me see so much of the complexities of every person that I know, love, come in contact with, and it helps me to have greater empathy and compassion for them. So that's just a little brief history on how this practice is helping me awaken my creative nature a lot more. And what I do with my moon blood is I wear, first of all, I wear a diva cup which is a little cup that is inserted into the yoni. I guess if you want to get technical, the vaginal canal. I really don't like using the term vagina because the Latin root word for vagina means sheath for a sword. Like the man is the sword and the women are just there to cover the sword or there for the purpose of the sword and that just does not resonate with me. So I like to call it a yoni, which is a sacred space. <laughs> the yoni is the sacred passage through which creative life comes. And I dilute the water, so I fill up this glass with water and then I just drain my yoni blood into it and that is the diluted blood. I do it twice a day in the morning and at night and a really fun practice that I've done with this is actually planting wildflower seeds. I had some wildflower seeds from a collaboration for a subscription box that I have, Simply Happy Kindred, and they had some wildflower um, seed bombs. So I went into my backyard and I put the seed bombs out and for four days that my moon cycle was flowing, I was pouring my diluted blood onto the land. And I'm so excited that one month later, my little sprouts for my wildflowers are already poking out of the ground. It's just so much fun for me to turn this natural cycle into something that I really have so much more kind of respect and regard for because I know that my blood is helping my plants thrive. There's just something about that that's really fun. So another really important aspect of um, draining my moon blood into my seeds that I planted is for the purpose of deepened intention. And especially since my moon cycle is currently flowing with the new moon, new moons are when you can't see the moon. So it's when the earth is blocking the sun's rays from um, seeing the reflection of the moon because that's all we see is the reflection. The sun's light bounces off the moon and that's what we see. So the new moon is when we can't see the moon and it's a really dark time, which is a good time to go inside and get quiet with ourselves, get super real with ourselves and sit with the things about ourselves that we can't see so this is our emotional state the way that we make decisions our fears seeds of intention that we want to plant so this is a really really great intentional ritual whenever I go into my backyard and before I pour my moon blood I set intention as to what it is that I'm looking to plant seeds for that I want to see grow in my life 
and with every moon cycle it changes so this new moon was in leo so every month you can kind of go through the elements earth air fire and water depending on the zodiac that the new moon is going to be in last month it was cancer which is a water sign this month is leo which is a fire sign next month will be an earth sign the next month after that will be air so there's always these cycles that are going on water fire earth air so every month you have a brand new opportunity to focus on a different aspect of your life Water has to do with emotions, fire has to do with passion, earth has to do with groundedness, physical plane, and air has to do with like thoughts or the way you communicate. Those are just really quick ties to each of the elements, but. So this has been my moon blood ritual episode. <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed it. So if you have any questions, comments, future episode ideas, or things that you want to kind of like know my personal practices with or opinions on, please leave them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, I think this was a really, really great video. I think that's about all that I have to say with it. And I will see you on my next video. Namaste. Just kidding. <laughs>